Pimanandi, Canto 1, Chapter 5, Text 18, 1, 5, 18. Another celebrated verse. This chapter is very often quoted verse, ch ch chapter. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Tasyai Vaheto Prayate Takobido Na labhyate yad brahmatam uparyatha. Ta labhyate dukhavad anyata sukham. Kalena sarvatra gabhira ramhasa. Tasyai vaheto prayate takovido. Na labhyate yad brahmatam uparyata. Ta labhyate dukhavad anyatak sukham. <coughs> Kalena sarvatra gabhira ramhasa. Persons who are actually intelligent and philosophically inclined should endeavor only for that purposeful end which is not obtainable even by wandering from the topmost planet from a loka down to the lowest planet patala loka as far as happiness is derived from sense enjoyment is concerned it can be obtained automatically in course of time just as in course of time we obtain miseries even though we do not desire them, which is true and is a very often repeated message by our founder Acharya. Listen to his classes, you can hear. He doesn't necessarily make reference to this verse, but it's true. And it, it, there's a verse, it says it. Purport by Srila Prabhupada, every man everywhere is trying to obtain the greatest amount of sense enjoyment by various endeavors. Some men are busy, engaged in trade, industry, economic development, political supremacy, etc. And some of them are engaged in fruitive work to become happy in the next life by attaining higher planets. It is said that on the moon, the inhabitants are fit for, for greater sense enjoyment by drinking Soma Rasa. And the Pitrit Loka is obtained by good charitable work. So, there are various programs for sense enjoyment, either during this life or in the life after death. Some are trying to reach the moon or other planets by some mechanical arrangement, for they are very anxious to get into such planets without doing good work. But it is not to happen. By the law of the Supreme, different places are meant for different grades of living beings according to the work they have performed. By good work only, as prescribed in the scriptures, can one obtain birth in a good family, opulence, good education, and good bodily features? We can, we see also that even in this life, one obtains a good education or money by good work. Similarly, in our next birth, we will get such desirable positions only by good work. Otherwise, it would not so happen that two persons born in the same place at the same time are seen differently placed according to previous work. But all such material positions are impermanent. The positions 
in the topmost Brahmaloka and in the lowest Patala are also changeable according to our own work. The philosophically inclined person must not be tempted by such changeable positions. He should try to get into the permanent life of bliss and knowledge where he will not be forced to come back again to the miserable material world, either in this or that planet. Miseries and mixed happiness are two features of material life, and they are obtained in Brahmaloka and in other lokas also. They are obtained in the life of the demigods and also in the life of the dogs and hawks. The miseries and mixed happiness of all living beings are only of different degree and quality, but no one is free from the miseries of birth, death, disease, and old age. Similarly, everyone has his destined happiness also. <clears throat> no one can get more or less of these things simply by personal endeavors. Even if they are obtained, they can be lost again. One should not, therefore, waste time with these flimsy things. Semicolon. One should only endeavor to go back to Godhead. That should be the mission of everyone's life. Verse after verse after verse after verse. 18,000 verses. The purpose of all the Vedas is to know <coughs> Eva Vedo, <coughs> Aham Eva Vedo, is to know Krishna. And going back, just building on previous verses, <coughs> affinity for the temporary is the primary obstacle of this material world. It, same thing in a different way. The material world is achieved for persons who want temporary pleasure or persons who don't want real pleasure. Now, it, it's a very dumb free will choice. I don't want temporary. I don't want permanent pleasure. Thank you. Why would we have such a desire? But all living entities, and there's a few living entities in the material world, don't want permanent pleasure. Or their desire for temporary pleasure, the desire for independent pleasure is so strong that the material world is made available. We discussed this already. The purpose why creation? What's the purpose? One answer is we wanted it. Another answer, Prabhupada's I like Prabhupada's answer also. Ananda. It says, misdirected, I want Ananda, misdirected. We want to, we want, we want to be happy. So the Vedas <clears throat> want people to be happy. A phrase that Prabhupada used many, so many times, Brahma Sokyam Tvanantam. Ananta, unlimited, unlimited pleasure. The, the 
driving force of a wise person and compassionate person is people should be happy. What's the Sanford phrase? Yeah. Sarve Suki no Bhavantu is the way the Prabhupada would say that. Sarve Suki no Bhavantu. Everyone should be happy. But people aren't happy. Or their sense of what is happy is an illusory sense of what is happy. It's it's not substantial, number one, not what real happiness is. And it's temporary, shashvatam. It's like the reflection in a mirror. The reflection in the mirror is not the real thing. And then you just slightly move the mirror and the reflection is gone. It was never the real thing anyways. And then circumstance and the mirror, the reflecting surface, that's the mind, slightly, ever so slightly moves and the, the reflection is gone. It never was, and then it's gone. Sarve Sukhi no Bhavantu. So the Vedas want us to find that Sukha, what, what real Parama Sukha, real transcendental happiness. That's what the verse is pointing to. So it's, you know, don't do this and do that. So the, the, the preamble is those who are thoughtful and philosophically inclined. Now, some people aren't so thoughtful and they're not so philosophically inclined. And so they, they, they go for the reflection endlessly because the, the craving for happiness or ananda doesn't stop because it's of the soul, who we are. So lifetime after lifetime, that keeps us, that pursuit of ananda keeps us moving. But it's very elusive. <laughs> Not only elusive, there's no such thing. But different ways of saying it, in a desert there's no water. Or in a prison, there's it's not comfortable. Somebody may want to make a prison cell comfortable. But by design, prison life is not comfortable. By design, it's, a, it's uncomfortable. And they're good at designing prisons, but they're not comfortable. Besides, you know, one, will, one is confined by the prison, you know, what the humanities in the prison are negligible. Then supposing one is a, an aspiring spiritualist. The aspiring spiritualist may purposefully undergo some inconvenience, tapasya, brahmacharjena, samena, namena, vatyagena, satya so chabhyam, Yamena, Niyamena, Va, nice verse from the Bhagavatam, starting with Tapasya. So that means, Tapasya means voluntarily, voluntarily at the same time means it's a must, but voluntarily I undergo some control of my senses, Tapasya. There's certain things I do, that's tapasya. Certain things I don't do, that's tapasya. And that's human life. Supposing one doesn't like tapasya, then be an animal. No tapasya. Feels good, do it. Hedonism. So we follow, the, you know, civilized people. You don't have to be a spiritualist, but they follow some tapasya. Voluntarily controlling the mind and senses purposely, and the purpose 
for the materialist can be these different explanations. Going in this life, prospering, or in the next life, prospering even more. So those who are thoughtful, the verse reads, those who are actually intelligent and, and philosophically inclined, they don't go for it. You know, in the higher this life or in the next life. Now there's lots of people that go for either or both. But, but the, the tapasya, the, the voluntary controlling of the mind and senses has a higher purpose. Because we've been discussing, it was just in yesterday's discussion about the austerities of Ravana. I mean, gosh, 10,000 years. 10,000 years of it's a very severe austerity. Not just, you know, on appearance day or on a codice or some, you know, 10,000 years. Cutting off a head at the end of each year. And then what did he do with that? That austerity was for the purpose of duskriti. He got merit. With the merit, he used it in a bad way, duskriti. Everyone that has some opulence, there's behind that opulence, whatever it might be, there's some kriti, there's some merit. That's, you know, on this, this life or the next life kind of merit. So then it's accumulated and someone has something, whatever that something is. I noticed a few pictures of your dancing pose. Like that image over there. These up here. So where's that ability come from? You know, it's ability comes from Krishna, but not, not everybody that tries to dance can dance. So the ability comes from Krishna and the bestowing of some gift. The, the four standard ones are mentioned. Janma, Aishwarya, Shruta, and Sri. The description of Ravana we heard yesterday when he was born, the description of Kumbhakarna when he was born, the description of Suparnaka when she was born, you know, freaky, different kinds of freaky. And Vibhishan was you know, in a different category. And his austerities were also severe, but his purpose in those austerities wasn't sense enjoyment. So, but so the, the duskritis, they want for sense enjoyment. And after the facility for sense enjoyment is there, you know, there's not so much, not the same kind of interest in austerity. Let's spend a little bit of time on the topic of devotional service. In, devo in devotional service, do we find that sometimes in the beginning of devotional service, there's a lot of enthusiasm for a step for simplicity and streamlining one's life and increasing one's hearing and chanting and, you know, there's incremental and even sometimes very swift enthusiasm in devotional practice and devotional activities. And then after some time, something else happens. After some time, there's something else that happens is that same enthusiasm kind of wanes little by little Previous material tendencies start to appear. It's like you turn the dimmer switch down and the darkness comes. And when the darkness comes, it comes commonly in the form of one's previous tendencies. Say it the other way. Previous tendencies can be superseded by bhakti. 
But supposing we go the other direction, bhakti slackens a bit, and previous tendencies start to appear, like weeds, where there's still roots of the weeds in the soil. And after some time, the weeds start to grow. And this is a metaphor that's used in Madhurya Kandamani, and there's, you know, anarthas are in the heart. And depending, you know, bhakti can check them, but supposing bhakti slackens, then they start to appear. Weeds in your garden will start to appear. What to do? Or the, the, the question, how to not become complacent, it's the same question, just backwards or in reverse order. <coughs> The, the the original purpose, commonly the original purpose, <clears throat> as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, four types of pious people, chatur vidha bhajante mamjana sukritin arjuna, so some sukriti people in four categories, they come to me to do devotional service. And when those four, because they're on the material platform, are a, a bit satisfied, then they're slackening. I want relief of distress. I want economic betterment. So, with that, I want, I want, I want, and when those I wants are fulfilled, it's thank you very much, see you later, Krishna. Because the motivation was on the material platform. So then it's necessary, absolutely necessary, to rise to the platform where the material motivation isn't the purpose. Supposing you, you just don't make this transition to a spiritual purpose, then it's gonna then it's gonna be complacency after some time. Therefore. The hearing process is very important from the very beginning, like here. This is Canto 1, Chapter 5. It continues for a few more cantos. But the same principle is to be understood. There's a higher purpose. Don't seek the happiness that can be found in these two facilities. Happiness in this life, happiness in the next life. If that's not it, but I want happiness, then what, what's the channel? Eternal happiness. From a so come to unlimited. No harm. Wanting unlimited happiness. But what's unlimited happiness? We we discussed it yesterday. The happiness of Krishna is unlimited happiness. And it's that's our hap that's the happiness of devotion. Supposing I don't get it. Or I say I get it, but I don't really get it. I say, yes, yes. I check the box during my Bhakti Shastri exam, but I don't really get it. It's not how I live my life. Then there's going to be, you know, mix or fuzzy or unsteadiness. Sometimes, sometimes less, sometimes more, sometimes less. Therefore, it's necessary for steadiness to come to the nishta stage, if necessary, that we do our hearing and chanting and our core spiritual activities attentively and in the association of those who are attentive and inclined to keep, you know, go the next step and go the next step and go the next step and become progressive Vaishnavas. We, we need sadhu sangha with genuine sadhus and become ourselves out of life. You know, part of which is hearing Srimad Bhagavatam regularly. Because there's there are verses like this, and there's other examples to illustrate verses like this. I'm going to read the Sanskrit again, the verse again, and we'll see if there's some discussion. 
Tasyaiva heto prayate to covido, the labyate ad brahmatam, upar yadha. Tal labyate do kavad anyata sukham. Talina sarvatra gabira brahmasa. Persons who are actually intelligent and philosophically inclined should endeavor only for that purposeful end which is not obtainable even by wandering from the topmost planet down to the lowest as far as happiness derived from sense enjoyment is concerned. It can be obtained automatically in course of time, just as in course of time we obtain miseries, even though we do not desire them. Move to the platform of the eternal and be cautious about getting sucked into the platform of the temporary because it's really easy to be sucked in. See if there's some discussion. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So, so, bhakti and falling down in bhakti. Can we take example of Akrura? Because in in tenth canto, when Akrura goes to Vrindavana to pick uh, Krishna and Balarama, he is in a devotional bliss seeing Krishna. And he offers obeisances. But later, later, like many, after many chapters actually, uh, when uh, he he plot for Shamantakamani. When he uh, did what? He, he, he plot with other uh, people to steal Shamantakamani. So can we take this example as... Raising in bhakti and falling down in bhakti. Not exactly. You know, the answer to that is from Bhagavad Gita. Sudur achar apichat sudur acharo bhajate mamananya bhak sadur eva So it was, there's detail, but it wasn't his nature to be fallen like that. He he got a little overwhelmed by circumstance. He did what he did by circumstance. It was corrected. Shipram Bhavati Dharmatma. So yes, he slipped, but we don't so we don't say he didn't slip, he slipped. But not his nature. And Krishna corrected him. Swiftly. Nice example. It's a good example of that verse from those two verses from Bhagavad Gita. Anything else? We have something else. Continuing to that question, Maharaj. Um, so, Akrura, again, um, because Krishna is there in Dwapara Yuga and he corrected Akrura. But now <laughs> but now Krishna is there along among us, but how as a Jivatma like devotees like me or like us, how we can from within or from without. Krishna is not visibly present as he was during Dwarf Yuga, but he's present completely within the heart, within scripture, through the medium of devotees and through the medium of devotees. He can speak to us. He does. And if we're, our antenna is up, we can understand Krishna speaking through this person.
<clears throat> two online questions. I'm ready. <clears throat> As Grastas, it always feels that we have feet in two boats. What should be our prayer and practice such that we just be on one boat of service to Krishna? This example of one foot in two boats is the example of Jagatananda in Prema Vivarta. Who's Jagatananda? Jagatananda is a very elevated devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, very dear to him, and kind of, you know, funny too. You know, not eccentric funny, but just, you know, not, not the ordinary Vaishnava. So he wrote a book, Prema Vivarta. Vivarta means what? Hidden, concealed. So he was carrying such prema for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And in this book, uh, he writes what this person said. He, he, he says, Jagatananda says, don't make the mistake of trying to cross a river with one foot in two different boats. You'll end up in the river. You won't be, end up crossing the river. So his so it's an instruction. Put both feet firmly in one boat. Now many people don't. Many people, you know, the mixed. They keep one foot in two different boats. You know, advance materially and advance spiritually, Om Jaya Jagadisha Hare. And, it, and uh, it, uh, that's a very different position than the position that's described in Sri Brahma Samhita, where Lord Brahma, in the final section of Sri Brahma Samhita, Lord Brahma raises a very important question and the final verses answer the question. I've had these fantastic realizations, all the Govinda prayers, and now next comes creating universe and that's, that's going to involve myself in material affairs. So how do I keep my high consciousness while engaged in material affairs? Sound familiar? question <laughs> you know first is how do you get to the spiritual consciousness the absorption but then how, how do you stay there when you're do you're doing your duties you for him it was building universe and for us it is whatever it is but it it, you know, it it can be distracting so that's the two one foot in two different boats then the answer is you connect the duties with the purpose of Krishna should be pleased. Like, you know, do your dance in the consciousness, not just I like dancing and it's authorized, so I'm going to be a dancer, but for the pleasure of Krishna. And that's, you know, there's degrees of that. Little children can dance. And they're, how much are they thinking for the pleasure of Krishna? But as bhakti matures, then it becomes that the responsibility of connecting our material affairs to Krishna is called gona dharma. Secondary gona, secondary dharma. And it becomes as valuable and as purifying as the primary dharma, hearing and chanting activity by connecting those secondary activities to the hearing and chanting, not just by convenience, but by principle. So the question was how to not have that problem where you have one foot in two different boats. It's, you know, get, in, get good instruction from Jagatananda or Lord Brahma or the Srimad Bhagavatam and understand what it looks like and then Practice it, cultivate it. And then in course of time, especially when the core activities are properly done, hearing from the right source, core activities are properly done, 
the tendency to have two foots, two feet in both feet in two different boats can move to having both feet in one. So it's gradual. By the Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam process. Second question. How do we connect our material purposes and material need, focuses? Purpose. 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 And needs to spiritual purpose to avoid complacency. To avoid complacency. Same question as yesterday. Next. How by hearing of Krishna Katha, the material dust is almost destroyed as per this verse and not completely destroyed? Why is this distinction? Okay. The question is clear. Nashta prayeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevya. That's the reference. And the, the, the Sanskrit word prayeshu or prayena means almost. So the, the question is, why not completely instead of almost? The answer is, it's just describing a stage. Keep going and it becomes completely. But until it's completely, it's almost. Prayena paryushakshyabhya. Prayena. Almost. It's a stage, it's a stage of steadiness, but not Bhava Bhakti and Prema Bhakti yet, so it's almost. It's just describing a stage of Bhakti. Anything else? That's all. In the room, anybody? Up front. Uh, <coughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, I would like to know about this previous tendencies we were talking about. Yeah. Um, how do we get rid of it? And uh, in case of Bharat Maharaj, also. Uh, did he go back to the previous tendency? There's two questions. Yeah. First is, what are they, where do they come from, how to deal with them? It's just, you know, it's accumulation over time. There are different Sanskrit terms. Vasana is one of them. Antakarana is another one. They both indicate the same. There's tendency that's accumulated not just in this life, but many lifetimes. Tendency. That's what it is, and how to deal with it is the same as everything else that's on, on the material platform. Tendency can be changed by purification and by training, both. Purification and training. And then Prabhupada's explanation I like. It's very simple. You practice at something, it becomes second nature. For example, when you first rode a bicycle, it took a while. It's, it's just motor skills or driving a car. It took a while. But after a while, you practice and practice and practice to become second nature. You don't have to, it's not difficult, second nature, because of practice, practice. And that's motor skills, what to speak of something that's inherent of the soul. Practice and practice, it becomes second nature. Spiritual nature is our nature. And to replace the material vasanas or material long-standing tendencies is practice who you really are. The covering becomes removed and who you really are becomes restored by practice. Abhyasa yogi yogtena chetasa nanyagamino from Bhagavad Gita by practice. And the right principles. And the second part of the question was about Bharat Maharaj. Uh, he... No, it wasn't previous. It was new. Yeah. Not like he. When he was a little boy, he had a deer in the backyard and 
he liked playing with the deer and then grew up and so the tendon it's not a propensity it's just it had to do my understanding is this it had to do with his chatriya slash protection tendency so he saw a helpless deer and he wanted to do something because he's protection tendency as a king or as a chatriya so he extended himself then no problem with extending himself to give protection to a, a baby deer but then things happened that was the problem he specifically he neglected his bhakti practices even at an advanced stage in favor of doting on the deer There wasn't a previous tendency. Thank you, Maharaj. <clears throat> One more question online. Thinking to do something for Krishna, is it just mental adjustment initially until we really reach to that platform? It depends, generally, but not necessarily. Something else? You have something. You spoke, Maharaj, about how when bhakti slackens, when bhakti, when bhakti slackens, that slackens, it's, yeah, that it's very easy to for weeds to grow, and conversely, that for those people who have their material desires fulfilled, the four types of pious people, it's very easy for them to slacken in their bhakti. But there is a verse that you alluded to, that. I wanted to ask a little bit more about uh, in Rishabdev Maharaj's instructions to his sons. He says, "Tapo divyam putrakayena satvam shudyed yasmad brahmasokyam torantam." About how divine penance or devotional service has the power to purify one's desires, because by itself the desire to reach Krishna is very, very rare. It, because that you you have this tendency, your voice is a normal pace, then all of a sudden the speed up goes real fast, and I can it. So help me. Speak slowly. Try it again. Can you <laughs> expand on this tendency? Which, this which one? Of bhakti to purify initially material desires yeah like dhruva maharaj like dhruva maharaj dhruva okay so you want it, you want the expansion of the dhruva story what are you looking for you mentioned in class today yeah that there's a tendency to become complacent after time that was the message now for people who approach Krishna with material desires. Yeah. Once they get those desires fulfilled. Yes. Their bhakti slackens. Common. Not always. Common. That that is the possibility. Here's the the that has to the little light has to go on saying this was not really the purpose of bhakti. That's the purpose of bhakti. So when this is fulfilled, tendency to slacken is there. But if, but so the, the person that doesn't want that to happen or knows that there is a tendency for that to happen, they see it, they may experience it and feel it, then, then such a person needs to consider what's the alternative, what's the real purpose, the, the higher purpose, the transcendental purpose, is not one of these four things. And if that happens, then one can continue without slackening. If it doesn't happen, the tendency to slacken is likely to occur. Is that a result of bhakti purifying those desires? Well, yes, and more than, and purifying those desires means what? You know, something takes their place. 
in the Druva story, he got the kingdom. He not only got his father's kingdom, he got the kingdom better than his father's father's father. But by that time, he was, his material purpose had been purified, yes. And Lord, when Lord Vishnu came and touched him with his conch shell, he was, you know, the, the higher consciousness awakening took place. I'm, I'm just being cautious about the, the, a, a, uh, a depiction of bhakti as being a mechanical process. That's all I'm doing here. It's not you do this and you get that. Om Jai Jagadisha Hare. It's not like that. There's another dimension. That's the, the, the higher purpose has to awaken. So purification implies, it's implicit. That will make it explicit. The higher purpose awakens. That's bhakti. The higher purpose awakens. Until, less than until that higher purpose awakens, tendency will be to slacken or previous tendencies to kick in again. It happens. Not surprise. We see it happen. And when we see it not happen, that's special. That's, you, you say, that's the exception rather than the rule. So it's just on the top, you know, the topic of purifies material aspiration. It may or may not happen. The, you know, the real standard of purity is the real thing awakens and the other thing becomes insignificant. Not just purified, it's insignificant. Something else? Because of Aparad as well? Offense. Well, there can be many. That's a big one and common one. It goes along with complacency. <laughs> Anything on the lady's side? Okay, let's end here. Srila Prabhupada.